Okay, generalized through and across variables. So we, we've been doing this sort of repetitive lecture thing, and uh, uh, this will be a slight break in the repetitive lecture action, and then we're going to do one more somewhat repetitive one that's going to harken back to those three that we just got through. Uh, but it's the one that's drawing all the analogies. So, uh, but we need to set it up first. So in lecture 1.7, we're going to uh, uh, introduce a generalization of, var of variables, okay? And then in lecture 1.8, we're going to introduce a, a generalization of elements. So the elements we've been cons considering, we've been talking about how, oh, maybe this element's like that element. Um, we're going we're gonna to do that explicitly today in lecture uh, uh, 1.8. But before we get there, we're going to actually generalize the variables first. So like voltage, velocity, and current, and force, and all that. So we're going to generalize those first, and then we're going to generalize the elements. So we have considered mechanical translational, rotational, and electronic systems, which we refer to as different energy domains. There are analogies among these systems that allow for generalizations of certain aspects. These generalizations will allow us to use a single framework for unifying the analysis of these and other dynamic systems. There are two important classes of variables common to lump parameter dynamic systems across variables and through variables. An across variable is one that makes reference to two nodes of a system element. So we're going to do some examples. Uh, in fact, we're going we're gonna to exhaustively list the ones that we've considered so far. So for the electronic energy domain, which variable do you think... So we're specifically going to be labeling these for power flow variables. So which power flow variable in the electronics uh, <clears throat> energy domain do you guys think needs reference to two nodes to be defined? Voltage. Voltage. Great. Voltage. Remember, we, we discussed how voltage is only defined between two points. So for the translational mechanical system, uh, we, we also have one. Well, we haven't worked as much with those and talked as much about them. Uh, any ideas on what that would be? Velocity. Velocity. That's right. So velocity and voltage both have V as the variable, and, and they're both across variables. And this sets up me the rest of the semester constantly calling voltage velocity and velocity voltage. So look forward to that. Um, I, I don't know how to stop myself. It just <laughs> happens. So this is velocity. We, we always mean the velocity relative to something, right? So velocities uh, uh, are not absolute in our um, uh, way of framing this. And then finally, for rotational mechanical systems, we're going to have angular velocity. Such a clicky mouse, man. <laughs> it's cool. No worries. Uh, so we denote a generalized across variable as script V. So all of these fit under. We can we can just say, oh, it's a, an across variable. We'll call it V. We want this as an abstraction um, so that we can, we can construct things uh, that apply to all three energy domains, and in fact, to others as well uh, in the future. Um, we're going to say, oh, for an across variable, blah, blah. Uh, and so we can, we can make these constructions using script V and uh, no 
don't have to do it for voltage and then velocity and then angular velocity all separately. We can do it just for script B. A through variable is one that represents a quantity that passes through a system element. For instance, the following are through variables. So if for the uh, electronic system, if voltage was the across variable, current is going to be the through variable, right? And we're already used to thinking of current as flowing through things. So that's good. That, that's a, that, that one feels pretty natural. Um, we already know that the current flowing through an element, if you looked at it on, uh, say, it was a resistor, um, the resistant or the the uh, the current flowing through the resistor on this end is the same as the current flowing through the resistor on that end, right? It's the same anywhere in the resistor, so that would be a through variable. Uh, now we've got for the mechanical translational system, the through variable is force, F. This one is probably not quite as natural for you to think about, but if we take a really simple mechanical system that you guys have seen before, uh, I think it'll become more clear. So if you have a little cantilever beam, and you put a force on it, F. Uh, you're used to, to thinking of, of these beams as transmitting the force through it, right? So if you were to just cut this anywhere, which you did in Mechanics of Materials course probably, right? Here, GE 206, yeah. Uh, if you cut that, then you would get, so if we just looked at the free body diagram of that section, you would have F on this side, but then you'd have to have F here, right? And you could do that anywhere throughout the beam that you cut. So that force is being transmitted through, through the, the element. And that's, um, that's why we think of force as being a through variable. Okay. Uh, similarly, uh, you can think of torque as being a through variable as well. So if we wanted to draw a simple example of this, if we had a shaft that had um, a torque applied to, say, um, say this end uh, and then say this was the cut uh, in it then you'd have to have uh, so well we'll do a cantilever one we'll just do the same exact example but it'll be rotational so a cantilevered um, uh, shaft this time and we're gonna apply a torque to it T if you cut it anywhere, then you took that element and you would have you'd have the torque here and then you would have so you'd have torque and then you'd have negative torque over there. Or yeah. Effectively. So well to be consistent, I should. I drew the arrow in the opposite direction, so I should just use T, right? Because negative would mean that it's going in the opposite direction of the arrow. So. Okay. Uh, good deal. I think that covers the through variables. But the idea, once again, is that we're transmitting torque through the element, and that's why it's a through variable. So we denote a generalized through variable as F. So all of these have script F as the generalized variable. So we're also going to introduce a couple other types of generalized variables um, that, that usually have important physical 
meanings. So the generalized integrated across variable x is the integral over time of v plus an initial uh, uh, condition. So we've got a, uh, I think a, uh, the, the, the most direct one that we're familiar with is if you took the velocity, the across variable velocity, and you integrated it over time, you would get the position, right? That's a kinematic relationship that we've discussed before and then that you, you've had in dynamics class, right? So this is our um, uh, position if it's a translational mechanical system. If it's a, uh, an electronic system, it's kind of weird because uh, remember the integral of the voltage it's called the magnetic flux linkage, right? It's kind of a weird quantity. We don't talk about a lot in electronics, but it does have a sort of physical meaning. And uh, we can then also do the same thing for the integrated uh, through variable h. So if we integrate the through variable f over time, uh, we're going to get the generalized integrated through variable h. For a uh, mechanical system, you're integrating the force over time. You remember Newton's, Newton's second law? It said force is the time rate of change of the momentum, right? Yeah, yeah. That means that our, uh, uh, if we integrate that, if we integrate force uh, and we integrate momentum over time, you're integrating a time derivative over time, so you're just going to get back the function, which is force. Uh, so, yeah. Cool. So hopefully that's clear. Uh, and then this is also, if you put in current here, what happens if you integrate current over time? You get charge. Charge, exactly. So you get you get charge coming out. So these are this is a useful quantity in most cases, right? So these integral versions of our power flow variables typically have some sort of physical meaning. And so that's why we're doing a generalized version of each of these two. And we did that when we introduced each type of, of uh, each energy domain. We introduced uh, the power flow variables, then we introduced the integrated versions of each of them. So for mechanical and electronic systems, power passing through a lumped parameter element is the product of the generalized through variable and generalized across variable. So if this is a electronic system, this is the current and this is the voltage. If it's a mechanical translational system, this is the force and this is the velocity. If it's a rotational mechanical system, this is the torque, and this is the angular velocity. But we're able now to write a single equation that describes all of them nicely. These generalized across and through variables are sometimes used in analysis. And I, and I have seen there are some students that have like really just like bought into using the generalized variables for every problem. And they say like, it doesn't matter if it's a, if it's an electronics problem, or if it's a mechanical problem, or whatever, I'm going to use the generalized variables. That's fine with me. Um, I, but I don't require it. And I won't do examples in only generalized variables, I, I'll usually use, if it's voltage, I usually use V and talk about voltage. Because um, I think it just feels a little bit more natural and we get, we get more intuition that way. Um, but it's totally fine to just use F and V in every problem if you want. Um, however, so like, it's, they're great as like tools if you want to use them. Uh, and we'll use them to define our processes and whatnot, because we want to define a general process, right? We don't want to uh, have to define the process for mechanical systems and electronic systems all separately. Uh, we want to do it just for one. So that's why we're generalizing this. But the key idea here is that there are two classes of power flow variables, across and through. These two classes allow us to strengthen the sense in which we consider different dynamic systems to be analogous. And that's what our, our sort of our main goal or maybe one of our primary takeaways from this is that if we think of velocity as being like voltage, 
we're starting to get on our way towards drawing um, uh, analogies among all of the different system elements, which is our next step. So in lecture 1.8, we will, we will introduce um, analogies among the elements specifically and not just the variables. So any questions on that?